The majority of the underworld inhabitants have been in support of Danny bravely embarking on her quest to protect the demons from the Eidolon Worm. However, there was also a faction amongst the demons that disagreed with the Brimstone Elemental's choice for Danny to be the champion. When this faction found out that Danny had both entered the abyss and then turned back due to the dangerous deep sea creatures and water pressure, they began to say that all hope was lost. Soon panic began to spread, which led to a mob of demons summoning the Wall of Flesh to try to block off part of the underworld so that when the flood eventually came, some of the underworld would at least be saved. However, this backfired, and the movement of the wall just made matters worse, and the threat of the abyss draining into their home became even more inevitable. Danny knew she had to defeat the wall before it could cause any more damage. This decision was difficult, because it would likely farther divide the factions of the underworld and also create a lot of enemies for Danny. Although, none of that would matter if her home ended up getting destroyed. So for Danny, it was time to fight. Welcome back, this is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as Danny the Demon, and last episode we defeated the Queen Bee as well as Deerclops, and we went to the Abyss and got our cool new flail here that shoots these projectiles out. This episode, I for sure want to defeat the Slime God and hopefully the Wall of Flesh as well, and we can get into hard mode. So in between episodes, I got a DPS meter, so we can see how much damage we can do now. So I want to test out these different weapons. Like, we got 500 damage. Uh, let's try our Biome Blade. Okay, so it's doing like 240. This is doing a consistent 300. Pretty good. Honestly, it seems like our Flail is our best weapon, combined with the Flame Ring. Okay, here we go. Whoa, this is amazing. Okay, I like this a lot. We gotta try this on the DPS tester. Oh my goodness, I'm seeing like 700 damage. That's crazy. And the animation on this thing looks so cool. Before we fight the Slime God, I did want to craft a couple items that we had skipped. The Gold Plume Spear. We didn't craft that. I don't think we're going to end up using these, but I just wanted to try them out since they're aerospec weapons. Ooh, this is cool. Shoots out little, like, wind attacks. Let's see what this one does. Ooh, this one shoots out feathers. These are actually pretty awesome. I think these would have been pretty good against, like, Skeletron or something. Okay, let's do this. So I'm just going to try using the flail and just go with one weapon for the most part. And we'll see if we can beat it. This is good. We got a nice arena. Can keep our distance. I had to pause it there to bump the music up. Because it still seems like we've got low volume on the Calamity music. It looks like those effects are a little bit different than I remember. Like they shoot off like... Uh, little slime projectiles in all directions. Man, this is pretty good. Because we have so many enemies, most of our attacks seem to be landing. There's just so much stuff that we can home into. Oh, we already have rage, too. Oh my gosh, we're landing actual hits against these things. This is insane, actually. <laughs> wow. This is like my easiest slime god fight, I think, ever. Wow. <laughs> Melee is so powerful. So, like, I think Summoner was the hardest Calamity series I've done. And Melee might be the easiest. I remember Mage was really powerful, too. Uh-oh. We were starting to get hits at the end, but we still survived. And you can hear, in the background, we've got a new song. It's because we've got the unofficial Calamity music installed. So we'll be hearing some new songs here and there. Pretty fun. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got. We have a permanent increase to adrenaline mode. So we do more damage and we get damage reduction. Very cool. And it looks like we have summoner, summoner, magic, ranged. No melee weapons from it, but we did get our purified gel. 
and this will craft into all sorts of really cool stuff. We've got this gel blade, it's pretty sweet, fires a gel wave. And then the fractured arc, that's gonna be amazing. And then we've got the bloody edge, which is pretty cool. And of course the knight's edge. Man, there's so many cool items we can craft. We definitely need to get the Statagel armor. I love that armor set. So now it's time to craft the Fractured Arc. This is gonna be such a cool weapon. <laughs> this has a parry mechanic. Some people have mentioned that this is really good against the Wall of Flesh. So you do a parry and then your next 10 attacks do extra damage. Ooh, and it's got the cool animation. Okay, so it says parry when you do it successfully. Oh, and then you shoot projectiles. Oh, okay, so I, I need to like stick my sword out and then my weapon gets super powerful. So let's try this again. Parry and then attack for 10 times. Ooh, this is cool. And it looks like it pierces. And then let's see what the damage is. Oh my gosh, 1,800 damage. This is amazing. Okay, so it looks like we probably need to craft this Static Refiner. And I think that will give us access, yep, to Statagel Armor. So let's craft all that up. So the set bonus says that you become immune if you take over 100 damage and you get an extra jump and better jump speed and jump height. So I think that's the reason I always remember enjoying this armor set because you just feel so springy with this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, look at that jump. Perfect. Fairy, yes. I like this mechanic. And then you know that you need to parry again. Oh, I got a weapon proficiency level up there too. By the way, sorry if my voice sounds a little bit weird. I'm pretty stuffed up today. It's not like anything serious, it's just allergies. Hopefully I'll be feeling a bit better soon. We could also do the Knight's Edge, but I kind of want to try this since this is modded. So let's see how this one works. It says that it has a chance to heal the player, but that's pretty cool. Seems like the chance is pretty high. I got healed pretty much every hit there. So it looks like I'm actually low on Purified Gel already. So I'm probably just gonna fight this boss once more and then we can get all the gel stuff we need. Let's give this Slime God another try. See how it goes. Oh my gosh. That is so powerful. Oh, I love it. This has got to be like one of the most OP pre-hard mode weapons. Unless you miss your parry, then it's like a bit more tricky. I'm a little bit slow with this weapon right now because I'm messing it up with a tad. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely kind of fun to play with an item that actually requires a bit of training to learn it, how to use it properly and everything. Now we can craft this cool gel sword. Ooh, it's very much like the sword you get from Betsy, I think. And the damage is not bad. 400 damage. So somebody in the comments had mentioned that I should craft a caustic sword. This will upgrade really easily in hard mode. All we need is an evil flask and poison and more deathweed. And we'll be able to craft the true caustic edge, which I think will be one of the first weapons I want to grab since it's just so easy to get. 300 damage. We could have gotten this a lot earlier and I think it would have been a lot better at that point. But I still wanted to have it just so that when we get into hard mode, we're ready to go with our first weapon. So now let's head down into the underworld and fight the wall of flesh. And while we're here, we might as well open up a few of these. Ooh, we got a slice of hell cake. This summons the baby imp. It's pretty cute. I like to always keep a shadow key just in my piggy bank with my pig safe merchant. This is one of the items that I like a lot from Louis AFK because it gives you a safe, a portable merchant, and your piggy bank. And ooh, we got another hell cake. And we also have a treasure magnet. Increases pickup range. That's really cool. 
so many treasures here. Oh, another treasure magnet. So I think I'm just going to drop the voodoo doll earlier because I don't think I need this long of an arena, especially now that I've seen the fractured arc. Wow, this is fast. Man, people said you could destroy the boss with this weapon, and that is no joke. That was the easiest <laughs> wall of flesh clear. That was like easier than an expert mode clear, and we're on death mode. That is how powerful this fractured arc is. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Oh, we have this box of 100 medicines or whatever and it gives us that buffed where when we die we respawn with full health i love that this song's kind of cool it sounds a lot like castlevania let's open this treasure bag whoa did they change that to where it gives you just a ton of emblems initially we got a breaker blade we got the pwn hammer very cool a music box charm of luck so much good stuff oh i forgot we had the dark lance is this upgrade to Oh yeah, the Terra Lance. It's actually really nice that we got the Dark Lance then. So much stuff to look through. Oh, a Demon Heart. This means we can do another accessory slot. I think the first thing we should do is probably head over to the Corruption. Maybe grab some of the materials so we can craft like some Icor Flasks and get the true Caustic Edge. Oh, I don't want to break a Perforator Summon. Oh, we have a Desert whatever thing going on right now. Ooh, <laughs> take that parry. Okay, let's break some of these. Get some souls of night. Got an evil smasher. Oh my gosh. We're getting more items here. Evil smasher again. I don't think this really is necessary <laughs> we've got so many evil smashers now <laughs> okay that's as much alter breaking as i need to do then that's pretty good Ooh, a slime staff we don't usually get one of those oh we can hit that thing through the wall Ooh, we got a jellyfish necklace then we're getting some lucky drops in here we probably need to just find where the corruption is. Ooh, never mind. We got one of these guys. I wonder, do these altars still spread corruption and stuff? And if it's not, then that means I would have no penalty to break in a whole bunch of them but I don't want to break them if they're spreading crimson all over my world because souls of night really aren't that hard to get. Ooh, we found our astral biome. Maybe we'll grab a little bit of astral stuff. I always forget what stuff you can craft with it, so it's good to just have a few stardust items before we move on. Ooh, these guys do a lot of damage. You need to be really careful. Man, this is just insane. We haven't even upgraded to anything for hard mode. We're just running around smashing these enemies. Okay, that's probably enough Stardust. We can keep on looking for what things we have around here. Got our little altar and our meteor. Okay, we gotta get out of this biome though. This is so dangerous. Why are there so many worms spawning? My goodness. Oh no. We have corruption, so we've probably got a V of corruption going down here. So if we just jump down this and head over to the right, we'll be able to find some corruption biome. This weapon looks so huge on our back. It's like I can't even see where we're walking. Oh, I just remembered. We don't get ore the same way now. We only have access to like our first tier of it, I think, or something. Unless they changed the way hard mode ore works. 
No, but I think it's I think that's correct. We can get Cobalt. But I don't think we can get Mithril yet. I think the first series where we had that change was the Silas series. And it made the first part of hard mode so interesting. Like I was totally stuck on Cryogen for a while. Although I don't think we're gonna have the same problem with this character because melee is so good. But we'll see. Cryogen is surprisingly difficult sometimes. Here we go, finally. The Underground Crimson. We should find Icor really quickly here. Ooh, we got an Icor spear. Oh, it's a rogue weapon though. Still cool though. Well, this has been very productive farming. So many Souls of Night and Icor. Ooh, we even got some little spiders down here. Well, we got two poison staffs just from dropping lava down into this area. So this NPC right here sells bottled water. So handy. Oh, he also sells Icor, but it's pretty expensive. One thing I always dislike doing is crafting bottled water because I always seem to have a hard time finding water whenever I need it. So now we can craft the true caustic edge. It's a projectile based hard mode weapon already. Oh, does this bounce? Oh wow, this is cool. Uh, let's try improved dummy, see the damage. Yeah, a thousand damage, thousand two hundred. And if we start adding true melee to that, incredible. And it even looks pretty cool with our character. It's very demon like. Well, I think that's a great place to end this episode. We've got a whole bunch of good stuff for hard mode already. So, between episodes, I'll probably prep a couple more items, try to get like maybe the Ankh Shield ingredients ready. And then we can fight Cryogen next episode. It's going to be a ton of fun. We also have the Queen Slime. I totally forgot about her. And then the Twins and all sorts of good stuff. So definitely stay tuned. This is one of my favorite parts of every series. The quick power creep of entering hard mode. And a lot of that is going to happen next episode. So definitely stay tuned. And if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time.